I'm Antje Jakelin. I'm the Archbishop of the Church of Sweden, and this is my first time to come to Iraq. In my church, as in many other churches, people are wondering what's really happening. Uh, what can we do to help Christian brothers and sisters? What can we do to assist also other communities that are under huge pressure? Now I've been here for a few days. I uh, have met a lot of people, both uh, leaders, political leaders, church leaders, but also IDPs, which is internally displaced people in refugee camps. I have worshipped together with a community that is displaced, uh, and I have met a group of youth. And of course the messages are not all consistent. What would you expect in a situation where so much trauma is a reality, where so much suffering has happened, and where so much is unsolved and unresolved? Uh, I'm very grateful that we had the opportunity to walk around in two refugee camps. Um, one with uh, uh, all Christian uh, people living there and uh, they were very open uh, and very helpful to me in telling their stories and it's in a sense amazing to see how people can adapt to extreme situations and still make something good of it. And uh, of course they're speaking of their hope to be able to return uh, to their villages. They said we can't go back as long as we know we are not secure. Otherwise, uh, we must understand that it's hard to cultivate hope in some circumstances. So when we talked to the youth, I realized that they are very much struggling with the question, is there a future for us in this country? What are opportunities to get work and to really experience equal citizenship? And uh, they were sort of divided. Some of them saying, no, there is no future for us here. And others saying, but what would this country be without us? Uh, f there, are, uh, there are enormous demands on the political leadership and on the church leadership. And I would wish that the church leadership really would feel that they are supported by the Christian community worldwide not only in prayer, as important as that is, uh, but also in, in deeds. When we worshiped together, it was so obvious that in spite of the different languages we speak, in spite of this very, very different experiences we have, there is something that binds us together in the language of worship, in the sharing of the bread, in the sharing of each other's company. And um, I'm impressed with these women in the refugee camps who were saying, it is our faith that holds us up. It's our faith that makes us live day by day.